Which of these numbers is smallest? This one, right? It is, but how do you know that? I'll bet you glance to the others to compare it and make sure. Do you think you could find the smallest without ever comparing? Try it here. How do you do this? How do you know which is smallest without knowing, out of any two, which one is smaller? You're about to see, and I guarantee the answer is useful, fast, and wonderfully intuitive. Let's work toward that answer by turning this problem into something we can all relate to. Here's some papers. Think of real papers, not of files or data. And we need to put them in alphabetical order by last name. What would your first step be? One way is to look at the top paper. It starts with a C. I'll put it here, leaving space in case I need to put A and B papers before it. This one goes to G, and I do the same for the rest of my papers. We've got a clump here, so do the same with the second letter of each word. And the third. Now pile them all back together. And we're done. What's the first one? What's the last? Did we ever compare? No. Would the same work for numbers? One way to find out. Here are the numbers again. The length of each stick is proportional to the number. We're going to go through the digits one at a time. So I'll color code the digits. And I'll match those colors with how much of the length comes from that digit. So these small tips are how much of the stick comes from the ones place. Then we have tens and hundreds. Now we're ready to try what we did with the papers. Instead of making A to Z piles, we'll make 0 to 9 buckets. We start with the left digit, because, like the first letter in a last name, it's the most significant part. So this number goes in the 1's bucket, this in the 5's bucket, and so on. Once I've bucketed them all, I copy them back into the original array. Now I move right by one digit, and I repeat the process on each bucket, copying the bucket back when I finish. I can skip buckets that have zero or one. I've just got this dense cluster left. Let's take a closer look and do the same thing. Now put them all back together. Here's our smallest, and we never needed to compare. Isn't it intuitive? We're not done yet, but if you like this solution, like the video. I'm Code Slate, and I'm here to make computer science fun, colorful, and relatable. So what's wrong with this simple algorithm? With all the copying, it uses more memory than it has to. We don't have time to fix that in this video, but check the description for how to clean that up. Here's another issue with this simple algorithm. What type of data does it work on? We can use strings, like in the papers example, or we can use... Integers? Hmm. Does it work on these integers? Or what about these? Let's fix it. We can handle short numbers by padding with zeros on the left, up to the length of our longest number. Now, if our data set just had one number that was crazy long, we'd be doing more work than we need to. And a different sorting algorithm might be a better choice. But for numbers that are about the same number of digits, it's fine. What about negatives? We'll treat the sign as a digit and do a first pass that splits positives and negatives into two buckets. Then we run as normal. Watch what happens. Our negatives are backwards. But that's an easy fix. Just reverse and put the two parts together. And here we are. This algorithm is called radix sort. Specifically, this is most significant digit, or MSD radix sort. This version is stable, meaning it preserves the original ordering, but not in place. It does need extra memory. To me, it's the most intuitive of the faster sorting algorithms. And it is fast. For example, quick sort is O of n log n. But radix sort can be O of n. Now, big O is theoretical, not practical. So radix sort isn't always faster, but it often is for strings or integers of similar lengths. And there are all sorts <coughs> of variations on it. Using 256 buckets rather than 10 processes one byte at a time and is a better fit for how computers represent data. Or here's another surprising variation. 
we can actually go through the digits starting with the ones and moving left. We do this for the whole array on each pass, rather than each bucket. It's called Least Significant Digit, or LSD rate sort. It's like we're running in reverse, but we arrive at the same place. LSD rate sort also has simpler code, but I still like MSD rate sort better. I'll tell you why as we watch a bigger example of MSD rate sort. First, it's one of those algorithms where it feels like you could discover it for yourself. The other thing I like about MSD rate sort is that each bucket doesn't need to know anything about the other buckets, so I can run it in parallel. For further reading, proof of time complexity, code, and benchmarks for runtime, check the description. And thanks for watching.